The second part of this question asks us, and before we read the question, let's just remind ourselves of the initial question, that a model rocket is fired into the air, it accelerates upwards, it's 46 meters per second squared, the engine runs out of fuel after seven seconds, so then it stops accelerating, neglecting air resistance, find, and now we're at the B part, the distance the rocket travels after the engine stops, and there they, gives us, they give us the velocity with which the engine stop at 322 meters per second until it reaches its maximum height. So what we have is that here the engine stops. After the engine stops, it is still traveling for some time, but it is losing velocity because of acceleration. Okay, downward acceleration, gravitational acceleration. So what we do know is from this point, from this part of the journey, from where the engine stops to where it reaches its maximum height, the only acceleration that applies is negative 9,8 meters per second squared. They tell us what is the velocity that the engine has, or actually the rocket has when the engine stops. In other words, the velocity when the engine stops, that's right here, for this part of the journey, this velocity is the initial velocity, okay? Because there's different accelerations that apply over these two sections, the initial velocity for the two sections are different. So the final velocity of the first section, or the first part of the journey, let me rather call it that, is the initial velocity for the next part of the journey. So here, the initial velocity is 322 meters per second. And then it reaches its maximum height. So what else do we know? Well, I hope you remember that the final velocity here, or the future velocity, is now the velocity at the end of this part of the journey that will always be zero at the maximum height because that's where it stops and starts falling back towards earth okay now for this part of the journey we have three known parameters and therefore we can calculate any other parameter what do they want they want the distance that the rocket travels after the engine stops so from here after the engine stops until it reaches its maximum height so they want this distance which is simply the displacement from this velocity to that velocity so with future velocity initial velocity and acceleration how can we go calculate that so we, here we go this formula will work okay future velocity initial velocity acceleration and delta x so that's the formula we're going to use so let's go ahead and solve that in that formula we have that the future velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2a delta x. Uh, future velocity squared we know is 0 squared because future velocity is when it reaches its maximum height. Initial velocity is what they also gave us in the question is 322 meters, square, meters per second and that is squared plus two times acceleration that now applies remember the only acceleration that this time applies is the downward acceleration of gravity so that is negative 9.8 the engine has stopped so there's no other force working on it then we have delta x is the value that we are trying to calculate to solve this we see we are going to have to subtract 322 on both sides 322 squared 322 squared subtracted on both sides which gives me negative 322 squared is equal to 2 times negative 9.8 is negative 19 comma 6 delta x so to continue in solving this question I'll have to divide both sides with a negative 19.6 and that is when I get my final answer of Delta x is equal to, we're going to have to use our calculator, 322 squared with a negative divided by 19.6 also with a negative is equal to, of course the negatives cancel and therefore there's a positive answer of 500, 
5,290 meters. 5,290 meters. That is the distance that it is still traveling from after the engine stopped. So this displacement right here is 5,290 meters. So let's go input this answer. We already selected the correct formula. Now initial velocity, we were given that as 322 meters per second. Final velocity is zero. The displacement is what we want to calculate. Time we don't know, but acceleration we know is negative 9.8. Sorry, negative 9.8 since it is a downward acceleration. Okay, substituting into our formula, we have substituted that zero squared is equal to 322 squared plus 2 times 9, sorry, negative, negative 9.8 times x. Preview. Looks good. And now we solve it, and we've already solved it on paper, and we got our answer as 5,290 meters. Perfect. Let's answer question C here as well. The maximum height that the rocket reached was how many meters above the point that it was launched from? So if it was launched from this point, we want to go and calculate how high has it gone from that point to its maximum height. So from this point to its maximum height. That's a very simple question. All we need to know is this distance and that distance. Adding those two distances together will give me the height that it was, it went, the maximum height it went above its launching point. That's the 1000, sorry, the 5290 and the 1127. If we add those two together, 5290 plus 1127 equals 6417 meters. 6417. Okay, meters is already given in the question, so we don't need to put in our unit. There we go.